Uh-oh. You turn it off? It turned off, so there's two separate videos. Oh. Sorry. See, well, this is why I shouldn't film. Things have two different ones. Veins have little valves in them, and the valves keep the blood moving toward the heart. Arteries don't need valves because the arteries are nearer the pump of the heart, so they're higher pressure. So the blood flows through the arteries very fast. But after it goes through these capillary beds and is trying to get back to the heart, it doesn't have much push behind it. It's like if you had a really, really long hose. The water at the very beginning of the hose has a lot of pressure because it's right by where you turn the water on. But if you had a long hose and you, you, may, and you kind of pinch the hose in a couple places, like it's pinched off here when it enters the capillaries, at the end it would have real low pressure. And it would be hard to get back. So what you have to have in these vessels are valves, one-way valves. It's like a turnstile getting into a, a football game. The blood can only go through it one way. It can't go backwards. And it keeps the blood moving toward, back toward the heart. Are those those two little circles? That's these little valves. This is a little valve inside the vein that you see there. And I think, oh, there, it shows it good right here. So it's almost like it like rotates and pushes it? Well, it's like... The blood's flowing this way, and it can't go back because that valve's there. So the only way it can go is that way. And eventually, when you move around, the, the, the movement of your body squeezes these vessels, and it keeps the blood moving. Okay. And it can only move one way. So if you squeeze at all, if you squeeze the vessels, it's going to keep it, keep it moving, and it eventually gets it back to the heart. So if you squeeze your arm... If you don't have to actually squeeze it. You just, if you move it, that squeezes the vessels a little bit and keeps the blood flowing. So if you want to keep your blood flowing, you just kind of stomp and move, and that keeps it going. <laughs> you ever funny. heard of that? Keep the blood flowing. It keeps the blood flowing. If the blood, if all the blood inside of you came out of your body right now, how much would it be? Nine uh, pints. I think it's about two or two or maybe three liters. I thought it was like nine pints. I don't know how much a pint is. I don't either. But that's what I thought it was. I think it is nine pints. Nine pints sounds good to me. I'll pints like that. this big. Only nine pints. Pint I'm right. It's six pints or five point six liters. The heart itself is broken into parts. I was close. The part that receives blood. Y'all, stay with me, please. The part that receives blood from the body is called an atrium. And the part that sends blood off is called a ventricle. Fish have two chambered hearts that receive blood in one in the atrium and squirt out blood in the ventricle. The blood then goes to the gills of the fish where it collects oxygen and becomes oxygenated. And then it goes to the body of the fish where it delivers its oxygen. And then it goes back to the heart. And so you can see it picks up the oxygen, then delivers the oxygen, and then back to the heart. That's a fish's circulatory system, and it's relatively simple. Wait, the atrium receives the blood? The atrium receives the blood, and the ventricle sends it off. So veins, so vein, ventricle, a, no. no. Veins, le veins leave the heart. Heart. Veins enter the atrium. Oh. Arteries come off the ventricles. Okay, so it's opposite. It's opposite, yeah. It doesn't work. That'd be good, though, if it did. But it doesn't. Well, just think of it as opposite. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, amphibians evolved a little more complicated system. Instead of having two chambers, they have three. They have two atria and one ventricle. And the one ventricle squirts the blood out of the heart and half the blood goes to the lungs of the frog and half the blood goes to the body. And so half of the blood is getting reoxygenated and then half is going to the body. So it's kind of like an extra pump it's getting. And birds and mammals 
have four chambered hearts. Oh, by the way, um, it's not just amphibians. Uh, most reptiles have three chambered hearts, too. <coughs> but some reptiles, like the alligator, and birds and mammals evolved a, a fourth chamber. And you can see there's, it's, it's divided up into two sides. The right side receives the oxygenated blood and sends it to the lungs. And the, the blood gets completely oxygenated and then goes back to the heart. And then another pump sends it to the rest of the body. So how many of each does it have? So it has two of each. Four total. Amphibians and reptiles have two. Amphibians and reptiles have three. But two. Fish have two. Mammals and birds have four. I know, but the reptiles have two something. They have two atria and one ventricle. And then birds and mammals two have two. Two atria and one ventricle for amphibians and reptiles. So, what we see here is an evolutionary progression. Fish don't need the four chambers because. They don't have to work against gravity to hold themselves up because they're in the water. So they don't need the extra pumps. Amphibians and reptiles live on the land. Now they have to get an extra pump to get enough oxygen to their muscles to hold themselves up against gravity because they can't use the buoyancy of the ocean. However, being cold-blooded they only need three chambers. But being warm-blooded, mammals and birds are the most active. They need a, the, the whole extra chamber for four chambers to be able to not only hold themselves up against gravity, but keep a high body temperature. That uses a lot of oxygen. So you end up breathing about 10 times as much oxygen as a reptile of your same size because you're keeping your body temperature high and you're moving around a lot more. Yeah. Would you say that more small animals have open circulatory and enclosed or larger? Yeah, like, or just yes, small tend to have open and large tend to have closed. What's the difference in an open and closed? That was, we already did that. The open, it like just goes through the body and the closed. It goes this was the, the open system where the, the blood leaves the vessels and just goes through the body cavity and then back to the heart. The closed system, the blood is always in the vessels. Which one do we have? Closed. Sure. So the open circulatory system doesn't have like any of those capillaries and things like that? It does not. You're right. It doesn't need them because the blood leaves the vessels and the blood goes to every cell. <coughs> Here's what your heart looks like from the outside. Maybe that's where people got the picture. It kind of looks like you, a, a heart shape. You see these vessels right here? These blood vessels supply the heart muscle itself. And the heart muscle itself needs a lot of oxygen because it's constantly pumping. Right now, in you, it's pumping. If these blood vessels get clogged up with cholesterol or plaques and stuff that block it, yeah, you'll have a heart attack. And that's when the heart stops pumping because of a clog. And they rush you to the hospital. They usually shoot a chemical in there that breaks up the, the plug, the clot. Sometimes it's a clot, like a floating, a floating uh, scab that's inside your blood vessels that floats along and stops up. It's a hard muscle. The heart is a, it's a big muscle. It's well, it's an organ. It, no, it, it has a lot. It's mostly muscle. But it also has epithelial tissue, it has nervous tissue. I mean, it's an organ. But yeah, yeah it's, it's mostly muscle. What's that yellow stuff? This yellow stuff is fat. It sits on the heart. Is that bad? No, nah, it's normal. How did blood clots happen? Blood clots happen when you have damage inside your blood vessels. And a clot stops the bleeding. So if you damage a blood vessel that starts bleeding, it'll clot. There's a mechanism that stops the bleeding using these little things that are floating around in the blood called platelets. Have you ever heard of them? And they stick to one another and they stop the bleeding and form a little scab. Now, if you cut your skin, the scab forms on the outside and it just falls off here. But if you cut yourself on the inside, the scab can form on the inside of the blood vessel. 
And if it breaks off and starts floating around in your blood vessels, it can be problematic because it can break off and float through the blood vessels and then get stuck in one of the smaller vessels. Do you have so, blood vessels in your you brain? Have, you have blood vessels in your brain, and if they stop up, you have a stroke. And you have really low platelet counts, you won't stop bleeding. That's correct. If you have low platelet counts, you don't stop bleeding very How do you start bleeding in the inside? If an injury. Um, often people who go through surgery so yeah, what? Could I be prone clots. to having a blood clot in my brain because of my car accident? Probably so, but you, it, it would have already happened, most likely. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because the blood clot, once, <laughs> once the, the bleeding is stopped, the clot will slowly dissolve away. Okay. So it's not, probably not still there. All right. I'm good. <laughs> Don't want to have a stroke. That's true. My grandma has a stroke. I think they're just doing... Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I remember you your mom used to wear the things there. on her arms. Here's what it looks like inside the heart. You have these valves right here that keep blood going in one direction. So blood comes into the heart through these big vessels, the superior and inferior vena cava. You don't have to know all these names, but in anatomy we learn them. And the, uh, then the blood gets pushed down. When the top of the heart, see the heart pumps like this. The top pumps and then the bottom pumps. So when the top pumps, it pushes the blood down. And then the ventricles pump and it pushes the blood back up. So the blood comes into the two atria. And then the top pumps and it pushes the blood down into the bottom, into the ventricles down here. And the blood goes down here. And then the bottom squeeze of the heart squeezes and that pushes the blood upward and out through this valve, and out through a valve they're not showing, it's behind here, that leads to this big vessel here. This is called the aorta. So the blood that goes into here goes to the lungs and picks up oxygen, and the blood that goes to the aorta here goes to the rest of the body and delivers it. That's the biggest blood vessel in your body right there, the aorta. Aorta? Aorta. See it right there? Mm -hmm. It's on top of the heart? Mm-hmm. What's your biggest organ? It's the biggest blood vessel. <laughs> biggest, organ. biggest organ is the skin. They can put electrodes and measure the heart, make sure the uh, system is working right. You get this, this wave that looks like this. That's a normal heart. This is what it looks like if you're having a heart attack. There's an electrical conduction system inside the heart. There's a little node right here. It's called the SA node. And that sends out a little electrical impulse about once a second that moves through fibers in the top of the heart and squeezes the top. And then the electrical impulse is sent out by this little piece of tissue called the AV node. And the electrical impulse goes down like this and comes back up it causes the bottom of the heart to squeeze and contract. So it's SA and AV? Yeah, SA is this one and AV is that one. And so, when you listen to a heartbeat, it's going... And what that is, is when the, the top squeezes, the blood goes down, and that valve, those two valves at the same time snap shut. And that's the first heart sound. And then the blood gets pushed upward, and then that, that valve snaps shut. It's like doors come open and then close, and when those close, you can hear the sound. So the sound are these valves. Thump, 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 thump. And you can hear those valves with a stethoscope, and the doctor will listen to make sure your heart's working right if he hears thump, thump. Now, one of the common things the doctor will hear is thump, thump, swish. Isn't that a thump, heart swish, like murmur or thump, something? Thump, thump, that's called a heart murmur. And what's happening is it's going thump, thump. The swish is blood that's leaking back through a, a valve that's not closed all the way. My friend has one of those. You can hear it those. swishing. You hear it thump, thump, swish. My friend has one of those. What if it sounds like this? Thump, swish, thump, thump, swish, thump, thump, swish, it's thump. thump. It's what do you think's not working? The first valve. The first set of valves something's wrong with. And blood swishing back. 
behind the first set of valves. So the doctor can tell what's wrong with the heart just by listening. He's trained in that, and he's heard it many times, so he can tell you. Can I go to the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes these SA nodes and AV nodes aren't working right, and you can get the heart can skip or the heart can go faster or not right. And what? often that's a bad problem, and sometimes it's no big deal. It just you got to go to a cardiologist. What's a pacemaker for? Sometimes this SA node won't work at all, and they can implant a pacemaker, and it takes over for the SA node. Like it's basically an electrode that sends out the signal. Like a defibrillator will pump the heart for you. Well, a defibrillator, sometimes you have this electrical signal, the impulse, the electrical impulse comes down and wraps around and just goes around in circles. And the ventricles just go like this. And they're in what's called fibrillation. They're just, and, and so the, and, the, and at that point your, your blood isn't pumping, so you'll die. And what they do is they get a defibrillator, they set it on the heart, it gives you about 20,000 volts of electricity, and that completely stops the heart. Oh, no, I mean bypass. And then the heart will start back up. That's what a defibrillator is. A bypass, bypass. Now, a bypass, here's a bypass. Let's say, let's say that this vessel is stopped up. This vessel right here is stopped up, so blood is not getting to the end of it. What they can do is they can take a vein, a vessel, out of your leg, and they can attach it here, and attach it here. If the clot's right there in the middle, they can bypass the clot. That's a bypass. Does that make sense? No? No, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you take a little vessel, usually out of your leg, there are some vessels in your legs that you can do without. And they cut a little piece of it, and they bypass wherever the clot is. And that'll keep blood flowing to that part of the heart that's not hitting it. Sometimes people have several clots, so they have to have several bypasses done in the same operation. Have you ever heard somebody got a triple bypass? Yeah. That's three different bypasses they had done. And so all this stuff's going to happen when you get older. You get to look forward What's to What's a pacemaker? Woo! You miss that was when you were in the bathroom. Oh. It's a it's a new SA node. Oh. It's an electric thing they put on there that sends out the electrical. My signal. friend's dog had a pacemaker. Oh, cool. Read chapter thirty-two. Oh, hey, there's a clogged a clogged artery. How does food? Fat in there. How does food clog arteries? Because.